Okay. <clears throat> so we should hear the voice saying that we are recording. I had I had the voice. So. Okay. So this it says recording here. So uh, let's get started. Uh, our speaker today is Clement de la Lia. Uh, and he will speak about course geometry of Hecke pairs and the Bancon conjecture. So please, Clement, go ahead. Yes. So thank you for uh, inviting me. It's my pleasure to speak. Uh, so I'm going to talk about uh, Hecke pairs and uh, basically it's a stability result about the Bancon conjecture. It's a generalization of the results of stability by extension of the conjecture of uh, Hervé Oyono Oyono. So uh, I will uh, I will write down on, the, on my tablet uh, so you can uh, yes you can interrupt me whenever you want and please ask questions if uh, you want any any precision on anything. Okay, so uh, I will assume some things, but I will recall a, a little bit of things that uh, so gamma will be a discrete group in the whole talk. And uh, I will look at uh, its reduced sister algebra, which I do not like this. And I, I believe you all know that what that is. So you take the span of the regular representation and you close it for the norm. Okay. Just to fix notations. And uh, we want to compute uh, the K theory uh, groups of the sister algebra, right? And to do this, we have uh, the assembly map, which was defined by uh, Paul Baum and Alain Cohen. Which I will denote uh, mu gamma. And it goes from uh, something which is called the uh, analytical k homology of a group to the k theory that's of interest to us. And the Bohm Cohen conjecture for a group is the setting, is the statement that uh, mu gamma is an isomorphism. Okay. And that's that statement that I'm interested about today. And also I should maybe say that uh, uh, this conjecture is known. So it will be of uh, relevance later. So I really recall that uh, it is known uh, for uh, <coughs> terminable groups. So all amenable groups, right? By uh, the paper of uh, Ixon Kasparov. We can also claim that uh, it was proven by Jean Luc and it's also known for hyperbolic groups, so Gromov hyperbolic groups. And that's the result of that form. And so I'm not uh, recalling all the all the cases that are known, of course, but I'm recalling the, the main result that I need, right? So also it's known that it's stable by extension. So that's uh, my PhD advisor, Hervé, who you know, you know. And also there is another kind of uh, result that I see now as an extension result, which is that uh, if uh, you have a proper action on a tree, uh, no, not proper, yeah. If you act on a tree uh, such that uh, the stabilizer satisfies the Von Kuhn conjecture, Uh, then the, the group also satisfies the conjecture, and that's also uh, what you know. Okay, so these are these are the results I needed to recall. And so basically, my uh, what I want to present today is a, a way to to see one and two here, the stability result in one kind of uh, one result, which is that uh, if you have a nice action uh, on a space 
of your group, and you know that the stabilizer satisfies the conjecture, then the group should also satisfy the conjecture. And using the previous point for ATM enabled hyperbolic groups, we can push a little bit forward the <coughs> class of groups for which the conjecture is. Okay. And so let me say that uh, for ATM enability, I want to make a, a little uh, remark that will serve as a motivation, which is that. Uh, A group is uh, ATM enabled, or we also say that it's uh, as a group's property, right? If uh, there exists an action on a real Hilbert space, uh, that is uh, proper, and by affine isometries, right? And proper means here in a metric sense. So that means that uh, if you take a vector, you apply a group element, then it should go, it should goes to the norm of GV should goes to infinity, right? And G goes to infinity, right? And uh, yeah. So if you have such a thing, so you know that the Bonkon conjecture is, uh, uh, is satisfied. And another way to, to, uh, to state uh, at ATM inability is to say that uh, you can actually take your group and embed it into H in a coarse way. So I will, uh, I will introduce uh, this notation which I will use to, to go faster. And what it means is uh, it's a gamma equivariant in a coarse embedding. So uh, gamma equivariant doesn't, uh, doesn't uh, it's not a problem to understand what it means, but what is coarse embedding? It means that uh, the, if I take the distance between two elements of the group, I can bound their distance like this. So basically what I would like is some transformation, maybe S, T. So you see that, uh, Usually, if I take a, an affine transformation of the distance between S and T, so here S and T are in gamma, I would say that it's a quasi isometry. And here I, I want something a little bit uh, weaker, so something I have more freedom with. So I just take some functions that are proper, right? So here uh, my functions they are uh, like uh, they are increasing functions that are proper. So yes. Right, and so the standard example is value of a tree. So I just recall that because it will come handy later. Uh, so let's say that, uh, for example, if X is a tree, an example of a coarse embedding is you take uh, L two of X like this, and if you take a vertex, what you do is you fix a vertex. Uh, V0 is fixed. It's your uh, root in your tree. And you will take uh, the, the sum of all the basis vector on the geodesic. Oops, I should say maybe x here then. OK, so you have your tree, you have your root. And this. Okay, and you take x here, maybe you take y here. And you see in a tree, you always have one geodesic connecting v to v0 and one other to do from y to v0. And if you do this sum, so then if you do a phi of x minus phi of y squared, what you have is just the this vector. So you have a sum of plus or minus one, but just it is supported on that geodesic here. So the geodesic from X to Y. And so when you sum and it compute its norm, it's just the distance to X, Y. And so here you see, you don't have a quasi-isometry, you just have a square root. So the, the control function, rho plus and rho minus, it's a square root, right? It's not, it's not linear, but it's still a course embedding, right? 
Okay. So I wanted to recall this because uh, this is uh, very important in seeing uh, if you want the atmenability as a coarse property. So it's an equivariant coarse property, meaning if you can find a coarse embedding into a real affine Hilbert space that's a gamma equivariant, then you're saying it's atmenable and you know the conjecture is true. And this will allow me to, uh, to recast some of my hypothesis in a, so what I will say is actually that I have a, a subgroup, but the, the subgroup is not normal. So I cannot say that the, the Cauchian group is a group, but what I'm saying is it's that I want something like the Cauchian group is a group. And I want to look at this. I want to look at this uh, stability result, so the, the first one by Oyono of extensions. And if you want, the setting is how it's a, it's an extension of this particular case if I take an extension so that the quotient is a group. But now my subgroup is not an extension. Right? Okay. So here, uh, here are my motivating questions. So the first question was uh, asked by uh, Guo Liang Yu. And it was, uh, uh, can we, is, uh, is Novikov, is the Novikov conjecture? Stable by extension because uh, so it's uh, it's it's known for the Bumkun conjecture. It's not known for the Novikov conjecture. I think. I hope not. And also the other thing is the motivating problem that I talked to you about, which was a question asked by Eric Gentner, uh, who was in Hawaii when I was doing my postdoc there. So if you have a group acting again, on an affine Hilbert space. But here you don't, you don't want necessarily a proper action, right? Uh, with uh, Bohm the Bohm-Cohen conjecture for stabilizers. Uh, can we deduce, or when can we deduce, if you want, the Bohm-Cohen conjecture for the whole group? And here, let me say something. It's just uh, morally, you should have uh, two major reasons why an action should not be proper. The first one would be when you have uh, bad orbits, right? So think of uh, think of uh, the integer group acting on the circle by irrational rotation. So what I mean is uh, the orbits can have accumulation points, something, something really not, not good looking, right? And the other way you cannot be proper is to have uh, big stabilizers. And here, the typical, uh, the typical thing you can think about is a gamma acting on a quotient group, right, where you have a normal subgroup, uh, it's gamma here, and, and n is infinite, right? Okay. And that's the situation I want to look at, actually. It's, that's the one I'm selecting, right? And here, I'm not looking at this thing here. So what I will say is that I have an action of an affine Hilbert space, and I have at least one orbit, which is a very nice space, so meaning that what I want is I have one orbit like this, which is a, a metric space that is proper so that all the finite radius balls are finite and of bounded geometry. So if I take the sub, if I take the biggest cardinality of the balls of radius R, so if I fix R and I look at all the balls there, they have a cardinal that's uniformly bounded. So the typical example is a KD graph or a graph with a, a regular graph with a agency that's bounded, right? So I'm looking at this. Yes. Okay. And actually, so that was my question. So now I, I imagine that I have this group. It has an action on a Hilbert space, but I can have huge stabilizers. 
but I know that this stabilizer may satisfy the bone conjunction. Okay. And it turns out that this was related to something that I did not know anything about, which is uh, AK pairs. So I will tell you now what is the AK pair, and I will tell you how to understand the relation uh, between what uh, what I'm what I'm saying and this. Okay. So if you have any questions, you can, you can always stop me. So AK pairs they are uh, they are just an inclusion of a subgroup inside a group. Which are almost normal. So, what is almost normal? What does almost normal means? It means that. So, they, this is the condition you find in a number theory, for instance. I got it wrong. So, if you take a lambda, the subgroup, and you take it, uh, you you conjugate it by an element gamma, then uh, they have a, the intersection of finite index in the, in the group, but what it really means is the following. It means that the subgroup and its conjugate, they have both a, a common subgroup of finite index, so they are virtually the same, and we call that uh, being commensurated. Yeah. So really, so you see right away that uh, if you have a normal subgroup, Or if uh, gamma or uh, its index is finite, then you are you have a AK pair, right? So a normal subgroup, of course, it's commensurated to any of its conjugate. It's the same, and of course, if you have a, a finite subgroup or a finite index subgroup, then it's also uh, it's also true. They have a they have a finite subgroup of common index. Right, of the finite index. Okay, so that's the that's the first thing. And uh, before giving you examples, what I want to tell you, yes. what I want to tell you is how to reinterpret this condition geometrically, right? Or maybe I should give no. I will I will do that. So. Basically, what you what you want to, to look at is the uh, coset space, and what I do is I define a distance on that coset space like this. So I look at two cosets, for instance, in the Cayley graph. So that's what it is, right? So what I mean is uh, here I fix a uh, left invariant proper metric on the group. They are all quasi isometric, so I'm not making really a choice here. And what I look is, uh, I, I take the, the Cayley graph. Maybe I can, yes, lines like this. Sorry. And that. So I'm making the Cayley graph of a free group here. It's better. To do it like this. Okay. And what I'm looking at, let's say that uh, gamma, so it's the free group, and I take the, the subgroup generated by A, and so all the cosets are these uh, horizontal lines here, like that, for instance. Okay. And the distance between two cosets, basically, it is the distance between these cosets in the Cayley graph. So here I have distance one, here also, you see? And that's, that's what it means, that, uh, that formula here. So I'm taking this thing. And you see already that in my example, since I have all these lines here, you see each time I, I go, I can always go a little bit further down and write another thing like that. And so I have all these uh, horizontal lines that says that here, the ball that's centered at the coset lambda of radius one. So what is it? It is lambda. And then it is also all the things of the type. Uh, so if I say A, N, uh, B, lambda, right? And in particular, it's infinite. 
So you see that uh, it's not of uh, bounded geometry here, right? And uh, the thing is, uh, it's actually the right condition to uh, recover the notion of AK algebra. So the proposition is that uh, a pair is AK if and only if uh, the coset space with this distance is of bounded geometry. Okay, so it's quite easy to see. And um, yes, so basically that's the link. It's, uh, it gives you a, a lot of ways to produce uh, AK pairs. Just if you have an action by isometry of a space of a group on a locally finite space, basically the stabilizer will be a AK subgroup. Okay. Uh, so let me give you some examples of uh, AK pairs that are quite uh, useful. So the, the first example is uh, the one that was first used in, uh, in the Boscon system. So that's, the, I guess, the first time that uh, AK pairs appears in operator algebras. So it is this one, so pz plus, it's AK in PQ plus. So I will, use, I will use always this notation here to say AK, it's I mean almost normal, right? And P plus uh, A is the, this kind of uh, matrices. Okay. Uh, a pair that is of, uh, that has attracted a lot of uh, interest because I think it's the original one in a Shimura's paper. So it's SLN Z, which is almost normal, is in SLN uh, Z where I add the inverse of a prime number. And I can also show that it's uh, a k pair in SLN Q, right? And a more geometric uh, example, which would be the uh, following. If you take gamma acting on a set, and you take a commensurated uh, uh, subset, so it means I take a subset in S such that when I translate it like that, it's fine. It has a finite uh, symmetric difference with itself, so it's uh, almost invariant in a sense. Then you can look at a finitely supported function on A, like this. You take a finite group F. And here, this is the subgroup that's almost normal in the Reef product. So you take a finitely supported function on, from S to F, and you take the cross product with uh, the semi direct product with gamma. So what's that uh, in, uh, in geometric group theory they call the a reef product associated uh, for gamma and F, right? Okay, so here you have uh, quite some examples, and I recall to you that the normal Sorry. subgroup or yes, uh, <coughs> just uh, in your definition of P plus sub A, yes, the little what's the identity that you put on A? A times A inverse equal one? Um, yeah, it's, it means it's a unit of the ring A. Okay, so A need not be commutative. No, in that case it is, look, it's just uh, A is Z or Q. Yeah, 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 no, no, because you wrote, I, I thought perhaps this, thing was not minus one, but something, some conjugation. No, no, it's, uh, so, uh, sorry, okay. it's, uh, it's, uh, it's an inverse. So A is a ring uh, and it's an inverse, so you can, yes. Okay. Okay, uh, thank you, yes. So yeah, I, I just, uh, I didn't write again the, the simplest example, which were a normal subgroup or a subgroup of finite index or a subgroup which is finite, right? That's always uh, also a k pair. An almost normal thing. Okay. Um, and so the, the result that you can give, okay, I will state it now. 
it's that uh, if I have a k pair such that the coset space uh, admits a, a gamma equivariant course embedding into Hilbert space and to uh, the Bumcon conjecture is satisfied for lambda, the subgroup, uh, then uh, gamma satisfies the Bumcon conjecture. And here I'm talking with coefficients for those who would like who are specialists, let's say. Okay. And so you see that this is actually a, a kind of a extension result. So if I have a normal subgroup, what I'm saying is if I have an extension with a Hagerup quotient, and if the, if the subgroup satisfies the Bumkun conjecture, then the group also does. And also, you have kind of a generalization of this result on with trees, because you know that a tree, it admits always an equivalent course embedding into the Hilbert space. And so the first condition is always satisfied. And then you're just saying, if I act on a tree and my stabilizer satisfies the Bumkun conjecture, uh, then the, the group does. So it's exactly what I was looking for. And so, yes. In particular, uh, say, suppose lambda is normal, right? So X yes. is a group. Mm -hmm. uh, and so in particular, a group, so are you, is it true that the group that embeds coarsely in his first space satisfies Bancom? Or maybe you said that at the beginning. Yes, yes. So I mean, I, it's not, this is not exactly the same as. Uh, it's as not the exactly final. the same because it's a little bit stronger than Hervé's results. Mm -hmm. in, in the way that I asked for the, in, in the case of a normal subgroup, my first condition, it reads that the quotient group has the Hag group property, it's at enable So that's what uh, I said, it's that uh, in the case of an extension, what I'm asking is that the quotient is Hag group, that's the first condition. So you remember, I, I recall that uh, being at enable is having an equivariant. And in that case, if you have, if you have a, if you are a quotient group that has an equivariant course embedding, it just means you're Hag group. Okay, so so yeah, so that yeah, that's what I meant by maybe you said it at the beginning because the definition of ATM inability is given by an action, not by an embedding. So you say it's the same yeah. that it it's goes embeds. Okay, it's a yeah, it's the definition in terms of uh, conditionally negative type comments. And so here, actually, I wanted to state my result in this way because it's simpler to to remember, but actually I have to be more precise and to say that it's, I have to have a Bumcon conjecture for all subgroup uh, lambda prime, uh, such that which contain lambda with finite index. Okay. So it's a, so what I mean is I have a small uh, modification to make. It's, I have to ask it for uh, all the family of stabilizer that look like uh, lambda, not only lambda. It's, but yeah, okay, so yes. And as a corollary, we can also actually answer the question of Guolian, uh, which is the following. Uh, if uh, I have a k pair uh, such that now a lambda n, the quotient, uh, ah, have a course embedding into Hilbert space, then the Novikov conjecture holds for uh, gamma. And so here the, the point uh, to understand is here you don't have a gamma equivalent, you just need a course embedding into Hilbert space. So it's, uh, it's actually, you have more freedom than, uh, than being a team enable than having that group property, okay? So you so, just so. need this kernel that is proper. Yes. Sorry. So your 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 definition of the Dominican conjecture is the rational injectivity of the Bancon assembly map, or something else? Yeah. So I'm using the descent principle. So yes, that's what I'm meaning. The rational injectivity. So that's that's how I prove it. Actually, I just build a space 
uh, such that the bomb cone conjecture with coefficients in that space is always true. Right? Anyway. Okay. So now that I stated this result, what I want to do is uh, I want to explain some ingredients that are that are quite uh, nice in this uh, setting. So uh, let me see. Yeah. So the first thing I want to talk about. So how do we prove this? Uh, the idea is to uh, really uh, generalize the proof for extension, and um, what takes the place of the Cauchy group is something called the Schlichten completion. So that's the first step, is to uh, to use something that I will explain what it is, and it's a replacement for a Cauchy group, and that will help us uh, build a strategy for the proof, which I will explain. And I will also I want to show you which kind of groups we can show the conjecture for. Okay. So yeah. Uh, up. Sorry. So here, uh, that was introduced in the 70s by uh, Schlichten, which is a German mathematician. And the idea is if you have a AK pair, you can associate it a better AK pair. Okay, it's another one. But here, a G is uh, totally disconnected and locally compact. And K, it is a compact open subgroup. And so you're going to say that up to now your groups were discrete. I'll tell you, OK, if I have uh, an open subgroup, I can always just uh, take the same definition to say that uh, a subgroup is a AK subgroup. Just the same definition, the, the quotient is a discrete uh, thing. And I can always uh, say that the, the, the conjugate are commensurated. Okay, they have a common subgroup of finite index. And so actually, AK pairs, it, uh, it makes sense for, for locally compact group with respect to an open subgroup. But uh, so why do we build a new AK pair? The main, the main advantage of this new one is that it's, uh, it's compact and also it's a, a universal one in a certain sense. Um, and I will tell you what, uh, what uh, G is, and I will show you. So yeah. So what I'll do is I'll take, uh, I'll take this uh, representation of gamma on uh, the coset space. So X is gamma over lambda. And here I take the permutation on X, right? And so this, it's a, it's a Polish group. So it's totally disconnected. And uh, the topology, uh, topology, I take the topology induced from a pointwise convergence on the map from x to x, right? And it makes it a, a Polish group. It's not locally compact at all. It's a, it's a big group. But uh, let me define G to be, so I take the image of gamma inside my permutation group. And I take the closure with respect to a pointwise convergence. And k will be uh, the closure of lambda in this. Okay. And to see what it's uh, so that the g. Is... So, so sorry, sorry. Um, in order to talk about convergence, on don't you need some structure on x, like it be metric or something? I mean, gamma and lambda were yeah. discrete. I, uh, had a, yes. I, had a, I had a course in bedding somewhere, or not. I mean, so yeah, you can you can define a metric on sigma x. Okay, but, but also I mean, you can. X. I mean, on x. No, no, it's uh, what I. Uh, x is a is a metric space. I defined the metric before. Ah, with the yeah, 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 with the metric. Yes. Okay. But I mean, also uh, the permutation on the uh, infinite uh, discrete uh, countable subset. It's always a Polish group. You take the you take the topology generated by the stabilizer of points. That's the topology of pointwise convergence, and it makes it a Polish group uh, totally disconnected. And then you can build the metric that makes it uh, that is compatible with the topology. 
that's what uh, that's what people are doing in that case. And so to see that it's the G, the image of uh, gamma is actually, so it's totally disconnected, of course, because the target is, but also it's locally compact. And to see that you need just to examine K. And what's happening is that you have lambda. And so if you think about it, what is uh, happening here is that uh, lambda, it's the stabilizer of the origin, if you want, in X. And it's acting by isometries on a space of, which is locally finite, so it's a bounded geometry. And so, in particular, the stabilizer of the origin it stabilizes all the spheres, all the balls. And so, it means that all the lambda orbits they are finite. So, when lambda acts on X, the image of the permutation representation. It's in a product of finite groups, uh, which are like this. Let me denote it like that. Uh, up, maybe. Okay. So all of these groups here, they are finite. And so uh, K, K, it sits inside that thing, and this thing is then uh, compact, right? It's a product of finite groups, so compact is compact. And so K is closed in a compact group, and so it's compact also. And to show that it's open, uh, it's actually enough to show that K, you can realize it as the uh, stabilizer uh, for the action of G on X. Right? So you can extend this action to G, and then you show that it's open this way. And so in, in this way, you can see that K is compact and open, and you have a, a neighborhood of the identity that's compact and open, and so that's compact, and G is uh, locally compact. So that's the main point here, is that you, you really get something that's locally compact. Right? Okay. And the main, the main thing about the Schlichting completion, what I need is uh, the following proposition, which is that my space X of before, so you, you remember I, I want to it's a metric space. And I was interested in the, in the case where it has a gamma equivariant coarse embedding into a Vipper space. And that is exactly true when G, the Schlichting completion, is AT manipulable. So really, G really makes. Uh, it really makes the, it's, it's basically if you have a normal subgroup, it's my remark of before that being AT minable just means you have a gamma equivalent course embedding. And here it's still true for this thing, which is the replacement for the quotient. Okay. So that's what, I, that's the first thing I need. And so now let me give you some, uh, some uh, examples of, uh, of maybe a Schlichting completion and uh, things like that. So usually uh, people, so I've seen this notation used, that G they denoted by like this, okay? And so for instance, if you take my uh, first example of uh, Z uh, like that, with respect to SLNZ, here you will get uh, PSLN of QP, okay, for a prime number. And if you take SLNQ, if you add all the, rush, uh, all, the prime, uh, all the inverses of prime numbers, what you will get is PSL and A, where A is the ring of Adele, finite Adele that are using the number theory. Uh, what other examples did I have? Uh, I had this one. Remember the Reef product uh, with respect to a commensurated subset A. But and that is the same thing as uh, taking this group. So what I do is uh, I look at not functions anymore. I allow not finitely supported functions. I have any function from A to, uh, to F. And outside of A, I, I, I stay with a compact support. And this whole thing, I take the cross product, uh, the semi-direct product, sorry, it's a professional. Yes, uh, with a uh, gamma. So it's kind of like I'm compactifying. You, you see in the 
in the Rift product, I'm compactifying this part here by, take, by making it a product and by taking the topology of, uh, of product uh, of uh, a product of finite, uh, finite sets. Okay. Uh, I'm just looking if I have other examples that are here and also the trivial examples that are uh, if I have a normal subgroup, then of course, the shifting completion is just the actual quotient group. Yes. And uh, if you want to know how you can get these examples, I will tell you the following thing that's very uh, useful. Uh, to produce a k subgroup, what you only need is a morphism from your group into a totally disconnected locally compact group. So if you have such a morphism, if you, if you have that the, the image is dense, uh, what you have is that any, if you take any uh, compact open subgroup in L, this will be a uh, AK subgroup, okay? And so that's how you can see that uh, actually you can compute these examples on top because you take just SLNZ where you add one over P and you, you take it to SLNQP, right? That's exactly in that setting. You have a morphism with dense image. You take the, the inverse image of SLNZP, the, the integer, the cladic integer, and you get SLNZ. And you're exactly in that thing. And then you just need to compute uh, the, the Schlichting completion. And I forgot to say that in that case, of course, the Schlichting completion, they coincide. And so if you have a, yeah, if you have a compact thing, then you just, you just caution by the biggest normal subgroup that's contained in K. And that's what you're, you're saying here. You take SLNQP. And so the shifting completion is just SLNQP quotiented by, mod out by the, the biggest normal subgroup containing SLNZP. And what is that? It's, uh, it's, the, uh, it's, uh, it's the center. It's a uh, geometry C, so you get the SLN. Okay. So I think, uh, I think the shifting completion is actually useful. That's why I, I took some time to talk about it because uh, maybe you cannot use what I did in my talk, but this, I think if you're studying AK algebras or if you're studying something, this should be actually useful to know and to understand better. That's, that's how I, so I was writing a, a very long proof and actually I found this way of doing it, which makes it a short paper now. Okay. So just to, to recall the, the important proposition here is this one that uh, my quotient space, it's, uh, it admits an equivalent embedding if and only if G is AT minable. Right. And uh, yes, so what I want to do, so I need to, to, to stop in 15 minutes, I think, or maybe less, five minutes, I don't know. How much time do I have? Uh, 10 minutes will be okay. 10 minutes, okay. So I will just give an idea of the proof without giving the details, and then I want to do some examples. And the idea is the following thing. It's something I call the, okay, uh, I, I gave it a name, which is the Kasparov uh, Oyono trick. Because it's kind of a, so it's an adaptation here, but it's kind of already uh, in uh, Kasparov's uh, paper in, where he proves the Novikov conjecture. And also in Hervé's paper with respect to extensions. And the idea is, uh, so in my setting, it would be the following. I take this product group and I make it act on G, okay? How do I do this? It's quite easy. If I have a pair, I make it act on that element by just uh, the left and right action. So uh, G S minus one, and here I, I take a sigma of gamma, right? Like this. And here, if you, if you look at this action, this action is transitive. Of course, you have a right action of G, transit T, and the stabilizer of G. Well, what does it look like? It's the set of pairs gamma G's, such that sigma gamma uh, 
uh, I made a mistake in my definition of my action. Here, I take S here and G minus one like that, right? So I make G act on the right and G act on the left and then I take Sigma on the left. Okay. And so if I stabilize the identity, it just means that I have a Sigma gamma, which is equal to G. And so my pair, it's of the type gamma, Sigma gamma. And that is a group that is isomorphic to gamma. It just is the diagonal image in gamma times G of gamma, but it's, it's a copy of gamma. And now I have a transitive action, uh, which, which is proper also, and which is, yes, with a stabilizer isomorphic to gamma. And so by Morita equivalence, I know that the bohm cohen conjecture for this product group uh, in with coefficients into an algebra of the type C0GA, this is equivalent to the bohm cohen conjecture for gamma with coefficients in A. So in order to prove the bohm cohen conjecture for gamma, I just, I just needed to prove it for gamma times G. And here you will say, but it looks more complicated. You still have gamma and you have G, but I will tell you, I can use something called the uh, partial assembly maps. And this was uh, first done by Chabert. And also uh, there is a paper by uh, Chabert, Oyono and Eshtaroff where they did, do it in more generality. And the idea is the following. If you have your assembly map for a product group, and you want to compute, show it's an isomorphism. Up. Okay, you can actually compute the assembly map in two steps. So first you take the cross product with respect to a gamma. So here you end in the analytic homology of G. And here on the right side, you take the cross product but with respect to gamma. And then here you have the actual uh, usual assembly map for G, right? The only new thing here that you use is this assembly map here, which is a partial version that was defined by Chabert. And let's call it new gamma with a G here. Okay, so it means that I'm, I'm, I'm only taking a partial cross product. And I told you before that, okay, if X has a coarse embedding that is equivariant, then this, this assembly map here is an isomorphism, right? So if I want to prove the bohm cohen conjecture for gamma, I just need to prove. So uh, what I only need to prove, I reduce to uh, proving that a new gamma G is an isomorphism, right? And this is done, uh, done by a, a restriction principle. Okay, which I will maybe, I will explain this maybe at the end of the talk if I have time. And basically uh, the rough, rough idea is just to uh, reduce everything to the compact subgroup of gamma times G. And this gives you, you can show that it's isomorphic to uh, something that is a, a, a subgroup of gamma that contains lambda with finite index. And it's exactly the condition, the second condition up here. Okay. Yes. So that's the idea of the proof. And now I would just want to spend uh, five minutes talking about some examples. Uh, so the, the goal is to show the conjecture for maybe new examples. And I think uh, we are able to do that now. Uh, the first remark, which is the following. Uh, let's say that I have a group and it's a discrete group and it's actually a, a irreducible lattice. It means it's a closed co-compact, uh, it's a closed subgroup of a finite co-volume and irreducible, it means if I project on any of the two factors, the image is of its length, okay? 
Okay, and if I have this such with uh, GT that has the property T and it's non compact, and GH is a T manable, so H is for Hagrup. group, uh, then uh, gamma uh, does not have. Uh, it's not does not it doesn't have is not is not eighty minable. Okay, and also so the reason is that if it would be eighty minable, then it's uh, it's uh, lattice in uh, the product would be also eighty minable, and it cannot be because it it has relative property T with a factor that is not compact, so that's not possible. So that's a, that's a, let's say a, an easy remark, but that's the kind of group I want to look at. And also this kind of group I, I will look at, it's uh, they don't have any uh, proper action on trees. They don't have any any real nice actions that we can use to prove a bone cone conjecture so that all the previous theorems, they don't hold for these groups. We cannot say, we cannot derive from previous results of a bone cone conjecture, uh, but, um, yes. And so the example I want to look at is the following. I take a G, uh, an algebraic group over Q, and such that the rank of its uh, QP points. So if I take the, it's of rank one, and here it's of higher rank if I take the real points. Right. And so here, uh, real, the rank one means that uh, G uh, QP uh, times GR, it's exactly uh, this uh, thing I, I told you. So here is GH times GT. But now uh, GH here, it's totally disconnected. So what, I'm, what I can do is uh, I, can, I can look at this, for instance. I look at the Z. Uh, one over p points, and this will be uh, the irreducible lattice, like that. And what I do is I have a morphism like that. You see, it is a of dense image as before. And here, the, the inverse image of G of Zp will be basically that thing, for instance. And that will say that this is actually a AK pair. And so uh, what I want, so uh, what I mean is that the, the Schlichten completion, it will be, basically it will be G of QP, the QP points. And so it's a group. So I mean the setting on my theorem, as long as the Z points, they satisfy the Bonkun conjecture. And so uh, there are such examples. Uh, such examples uh, with uh, G, the Z points, which are uh, uniform lattices, so co compact uh, lattices inside SP of N1, where N is three or five. Okay, so if you look at, uh, you have to be careful because you have a lot of conditions here. And if you look at the classification of uh, algebraic groups over. Uh, over Archimedean and non-Archimedean fields by, uh, I forgot, sorry. But you have a classification, you can look at the paper and you find that there are some families that are in that setting, uh, meaning that I can have QP points of rank one, uh, real points of, of higher rank, and also the GZ, the Z points, it's a uniform lattice in a hyperbolic group, so it's a, a hyperbolic group. So now you know that GZ satisfies the Bonkun conjecture with coefficients. You also know that the Schlichten completion satisfies the Bonkun conjecture. And so you know that uh, the Z uh, one over P points, up like this, it satisfies, uh, satisfies BC. And of course, it's not, uh, I think it's not really amenable to other results because of what I told you, it's not a team enable, it's not anything like this. And so basically, yeah, that's 
that's it. Uh, I will stop here. I think my time is done. And thank you for listening to me. Okay. Thank you very much, Clement. Are there any uh, further questions? So I guess your point for uh, you didn't mention Heke algebras because you ran out of time. That was the point four. Uh, yes. Also, I didn't write down the work on Heke algebras. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. Yes. Okay. It's, it's work in progress. This is uh, this is in my all I talk today is in my preprint on the archive. Uh -huh. Okay. So if there are no further questions, uh, we thank uh, Clement and uh, thank you very nice talk and stop the recording.